Welcome back to This Week in Weed. Let's take a look at this week's top stories. Cannabis and its active constituents appear to be safe and modestly effective treatments in patients suffering from a variety of chronic pain conditions, including neuropathy, according to a literature review to be published in the Clinical Journal of Pain. An investigator from New York University, Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation, conducted a PubMed search to survey the percentage of positive and negative published randomized controlled trials assessing cannabinoids as treatments for pain. Of the 56 hits generated, 38 published RCTs met inclusion criteria. Of these, 71% concluded that cannabinoids had empirically demonstrable and statistically significant pain-relieving effects, whereas 29% did not. Cannabinoids appear to be most effective in treating hard-to-treat neuropathic pain conditions. For notoriously difficult-to-treat conditions, such as HIV neuropathy, cannabinergic pain medicines, particularly inhaled cannabinoid botanicals, are one of the only treatments that have been shown to be safe and effective with the highest level of evidence, the review states. 5-10% of the U.S. population is estimated to suffer from neuropathic pain at some point during their lives. The study concludes, Overall, based on the existing clinical trial database, cannabinergic pain medicines have been shown to be modestly effective in safe treatments in patients with a variety of chronic pain conditions. Incorporating cannabinergic medicine topics into pain medicine education seems warranted, and continuing clinical research and empiric treatment trials are appropriate. A separate paper published in January in the Harm Reduction Journal concluded prescribing cannabis in place of opioids for neuropathic pain may reduce the morbidity and mortality rates associated with prescription pain medications and may be an effective harm reduction strategy. A federal judge in Sacramento last week dismissed a federal lawsuit filed in November by members of the Normal Legal Committee against the U.S. Department of Justice, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder, and DEA Director Michelle Leonhardt. The lawsuit, one of four filed simultaneously in the state's four federal districts, argues that the Justice Department's ongoing crackdown against medical marijuana providers and distributors in California is in violation of the 9th, 10th, and 14th Amendments to the U.S. Constitution because the use of cannabis therapeutically is a fundamental right. Petitioners also argue, using the theory of judicial estoppel, that the Justice Department had previously affirmed in public memos and in statements made in federal court that would no longer use federal resources to prosecute cannabis patients or providers who are compliant with state law. On Wednesday of last week, U.S. District Judge Garland Burrell Jr. rejected those arguments and granted the respondent's dismissal motion. He denied petitioner's request for public hearings prior to making his ruling. Judge Burrell rejected plaintiff's Ninth and Tenth Amendment challenges, finding, since the Supreme Court has held that the Controlled Substances Act, categorical prohibition of the possession, manufacturing, and distribution of marijuana, does not exceed Congress's authority under the Commerce Clause, plaintiffs do not have a viable claim. He also rejected plaintiffs' equal protection arguments, finding that the Justice Department's actions in California mimic efforts the federal government has taken against similarly situated individuals elsewhere. Judge Bureau also cited court rulings finding that defendants in previous challenges have failed to meet the heavy burden of proving the irrationality of the Schedule I classification of marijuana. Finally, Judge Bureau dismissed plaintiff's judicial estoppel claim, which argues that defendants' recent crackdown against medical cannabis patients flouts the representations made on the record by the Justice Department in public memos and statements in court. Responding to this challenge, Judge Bureau determined, since judicial estoppel does not apply unless a party's later position is clearly inconsistent with its earlier position, and the Ogden memo does not contain a promise not to enforce the CSA, defendants' enforcement of the CSA is not inconsistent. Commenting on the ruling, Attorney David Michael of San Francisco, along with Matt Cuman of San Francisco, and Alan Sibler of Roseland, were the lead attorneys in these challenges, said, We are disappointed but not discouraged that the district courts have thus far denied us the relief we had sought. They are constrained by existing precedent, and the result was not unexpected. It is the Ninth Circuit where we hope to find a receptive audience, and, with the Lawrence v. Texas decision, we may also have a more receptive audience in the Supreme Court, should the issue go there. Judges for the Ninth Circuit have previously determined in Rage First Gonzalez, for now, federal law is blind to the wisdom of a future day when the right to use medical marijuana to alleviate excruciating pain may be deemed fundamental. Although that day has not yet dawned, it may be upon us sooner than expected. That's it for this week in Weed. Check back next Thursday for more top stories.